Janet Seidel is one of Australia's leading jazz vocalists. She's performed across Australia and around the world. Today she joins me in person. Welcome Janet. Hi. Now before we begin our interview, I'd like the viewers to just get an idea of your singing style. And it's the tribute to Blossom Deary that you've written, isn't it? That's right. I've written a show and I've also written a song celebrating uh, the big influence she's had over my musical life. And the show is called Dear Blossom, as is the song. When I first heard her play, she had a fairy voice, she had a delicate touch, crystal clear diction, perfect predilection for a singer of songs with style. She certainly could be guile. She had a way with her, a perfect soiree with her. They called her Blossom, dear Blossom, dearie. Really, twas the name she was born with. Apple pie and corn with singing, swinging. I went through Paris, London, New York City. She's perfection in a cool, cool way. Is more so they say I'm telling her tale for you Let me prevail on you To tell the story Of oh, Blossom Dear Blossom Blossom Deary Well Janet, a lot of people probably don't know much about Blossom Deary Why did you get attracted to her? I was actually first made aware of Blossom Deary in the 1970s when I was doing my homework on the farm at Mount Compass. I used to listen to a program called Music to Midnight on the ABC. With Arch McCurdy. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I really wish we still had that program because it was such good listening. And I heard Blossom's, uh, I heard one of her compositions. I thought, gee, that sounds interesting. What an interesting way of singing. It's a very um, distinctive style, and is that what you're trying to do yourself? You're saying, look, I'm my own person, I want to have my own style? Exactly, and I remember when I first heard her at the Adelaide Festival Theatre, the theatre had only been built about a year, and she was support for Stefan Grappelli, and then she just proceeded to captivate the whole audience in a very delicate and um, intimate way. And I've always felt a bit apologetic about my voice because I'm not a belter. I'm not a blues belter or an opera singer. And I thought, well, if she can do it, so can I. So it was re really inspiring for me. So let's take you back to that time then. You're a teenager at home on a dairy farm <laughs> listening to the radio and you decide you want to become a singer. <laughs> well, in, yeah, I guess so. You know, I was singing in the high school productions. I, I got up enough nerve to audition for Eliza in My Fair Lady and I got the role. But I was actually really very, very shy. I used to stumble and worry that I wasn't good enough. But I, once I put the makeup on and became Eliza, I figured out this is a way of conquering my shyness. And then you went to this show, you saw someone doing it and said, well, if she can do it, I can do it. Yeah, and I don't need to worry about my voice. I know I've got an intimate way of singing and I can play. At that stage, I started playing a little bit of jazz, even though I was studying classical. And I thought, this is a really nice way of communicating good songs. Now, you've been very popular in the Asian region, parts of Asia, aren't you? Now, just tell me, where are you the most popular at the moment? I think uh, certainly Japan, uh, because we've toured there quite a lot, but my albums are sold and, rele and released in Taiwan, and I haven't performed there, but I think there's a chance we'll be going there later on this year. So I don't know why they like me, but they just do. <laughs> do you think it's because you've got a purity to your voice, that it's, you can hear the words clearly? This is something you've really Possibly. strive for isn't it? Possibly. Um, I don't ever really try hard that way but I do have a pretty clear diction and yeah I think uh, the Japanese particularly they they've always loved the way someone like Ella Fitzgerald and the the more even though Ella Fitzgerald was a fabulous scat singer she also released those albums where she just sang the song the way it was written and there is certainly a big market for that kind of singing and uh, Were you trained that way? Um, the, the, the jazz singing, I mean, you went to the Conservatorium of Music. Were you trained classically or in jazz? Yes. Uh, in my day, there was no jazz course. So they had no Mr. Hancock, I think he was the head of the no, jazz scene? No, no. And I, only, I met Bruce Hancock in later years uh, when I started working as a professional musician in Adelaide. But no, in my day, it was very strictly classical. 
and uh, almost... So you did opera singing, didn't you? No, I did actually, I was a classical pianist and I was studying, and I studied to be a music teacher, high school music teacher. I played flute, very feminine, did a little bit of classical singing training and uh, they realised that I wasn't going to be an opera singer, so I sang Vaughan Williams folk songs and very sort of delicate songs. But that training actually has really helped me over the years and I think it, it helps to know how to breathe and how to project your voice even though you're not going to get that massive vibrato that an opera singer will get. Still classical training has never been a problem for me. So how did you get, as they say, the first big break? I mean, were you, were you, did you go and sing in a club and say give us a chance or what happened? Actually my first touch of glamour was when I was second year at the con and uh, piano bars had just come in. And the I, con, the conservatorium. Oh, sorry, the, the, conserv conservatorium. the elder conservatorium <laughs> of music. <laughs> and uh, there was a place uh, called Ladies Piano Bar and I, someone had told them about this girl who sang and played piano. So that was my first chance of actually playing standards and entertaining people in that way. But it was later that I got a chance to work with a double bass player, my brother, and a very good drummer, that I started to get more into... And you still tour with your brother? I do. Th that it, must be fun, was it? It is, and he's a very talented musician, and in fact he's been instrumental in my success because he formed a record company to enable me to put out my first album. And ever since we released that first album, Little Jazz Bird, things have really taken off for me in terms of festivals in Australia and also a jazz festival in Japan as well. Now, we were talking before about something that I think a lot of people don't consider, and that is we should be much more considerate of singers in nightclubs. <laughs> now, you said you played in that piano bar, oh, and, yes. and people smoke in these bars. Now, you, yes. you said you, do, you detest cigarette smoke, don't and you? And more so, cig cigar smoke. And it just seems to be a certain kind of person who likes to sit back and smoke a nice big fat cigar is attracted to piano bars. I don't know why. But uh, in fact, we, we wrote a show, I wrote a show last year called We Get Requests, which is to do with my years of piano bars and people stumbling in and saying, can you play kitten up a tree? Mm. Wanting you to play Misty. Yes. So there's a lot of experiences that I've garnered from my years of playing in those hotel lounges that I've actually used for commercial gain. <laughs> to write a show, to put out an album. Would you think that there would be a market for a, a non-smoking piano bar? Or do you think that it just it goes with the territory? Jazz, we expect a smoky room. I think there, there will be a day when a piano bars and bars in hotels are completely smoke-free. I think it's really to do with the staff getting, you know, secondary lung cancer from well, second... I imagine how many years you've been oh, breathing in other people's cigarettes. Breathing in deep to sing a nice uh, song and uh, get a big whiff of cigar smoke. No, it will change. Now, one of the other artists that you have a great deal of admiration for is Doris Day. Now, once again, that's, uh, she's got that, I suppose, the sweet... And the squeaky clean image too. Sweet, yeah. <laughs> In fact, um, they're both about the same age, Doris Day and Blossom Deary, and Blossom certainly attributes her longevity to good, clean living. And uh, Doris Day has been out of the public eye for years, but she's certainly an outdoor type of girl and rides her bike around Monterey, and, yeah, she's, still, she's a, an icon. And does Blossom Deary know about you and, and Doris Day, vice versa? Do they know about you? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> well, I think Do Doris Day certainly does because she sent me the sheet, the sheet music of Secret Love to Janet Love Doris Day. But uh, I, Steve Ross, who, who's been appearing in the Adelaide Cabaret Festival, is going to send my tribute CD to Blossom. He knows Blossom Deary quite well, so I guess they'll get to know me. Oh, they should be I hope they're not offended. <laughs> well, uh, they say, was it imitation is the greatest form of flattery? And, uh, <laughs> well, well, why don't we finish today by having you do a little bit of Doris Day, unaccompanied. Unaccompanied and, as and, I and, am, unaccustomed as I it's, 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 the, it's the song that I think, when everyone hears it, they think, ah, that's the good, clean 50s coming back to hear it. It is. <laughs> and in, in fact, it's a song that Doris sang in four of her movies. Really? Yes. Um, and she, when she first heard it, she thought it would never make it out of the nursery. She thought it wasn't the potential hit song that it became for her. And it means whatever will be, will be, and it's called... Que sera, sera. sera. When I was just a little girl, I asked my mother, what will I be? Will I be pretty? Will I be rich? 
Here's what she said to me. Que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Que sera, sera. That was absolutely lovely. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I wish you all the best. And I hope you do get those tours organised throughout those places where you are so popular that they've never seen you in person. Taiwan, here we come. Okay. <laughs> Thanks again for your time. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.